Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And boy, I have an interesting video for you guys today. So to kick things off, before we get into Libra, the cryptocurrency or supposed cryptocurrency, we have XRP Amaze Me sharing this with CLS Group. Again, continuous link settlement. They do well over the majority of all foreign exchange settlement in the world. If XRP can complement this in any way, just understand that everything that you dreamt about is going to occur. So with this right here, this little clip, I'm going to play this, but essentially considered the first global foreign exchange market enterprise application running on blockchain and in production CLS net. And it kind of reminds me, notice, remember, Sia chain and Sia net has been developed for and in collaboration with buy side and sell side institutions. So it does not mention Ripple XRP. No, but again, look at these types of marketplaces taking place. And I may, you know, this may have nothing to do with XRP, but I want to tie it in and show you reasons why it very well could to some degree. So right the here. The magic of CLS Net is that it will standardize across all participants in the market. And that means the product is perfect for the sell side banks, for hedge funds, asset managers, the entire buy side, right down to corporates. All right, so again, simple standard interface, standardization, interoperability. Now remember, and again, this gentleman down here was even saying this, but um, I'm, instead of pay now, it is actually called pay plus. So Ripple Tech is integrated into Finastra and Ripple and Finastra are partners. And as we can see here, this is I am Legion's coil blog. We can see Finastra, New York, October 11th, 2015. We can see Ripple to deliver innovative payment capabilities by integrating Global Pay Plus in its global services hub with Ripple's DLT, creating a foundation for further disruptive payments innovation. So this is something that if this is the case, they want to keep this quiet. This is not supposed to be, you know, well out in the open. But of course, all of this is public information. So we can see into Ripple's integrated to Global Pay Plus, their global payment services hub and spoke model. Now, as this gentleman even goes on to say, Pay Plus instead of Pay Now connects to CLS to the blockchain, and CLS is also being used by the DTCC for instant settlements, ultimately via XRP. Again, the most liquid asset on a permissionless basis, open sourced, will be chosen. So as we go here, next, Finastra, and I've shared this in the past, just re-showing this as an intro for this video, Pay Plus for CLS now, and they're integrated with RippleNet. So integrated CLS services for foreign exchange transactions. So we can see all about this. Again, I've gone over the volume. If you guys want to look up that video, you can just type in Kevin Cage, all you need to know about, you know, Finastra, all the proof you need. Finastra is connected to the top 48 of 50 banks in the world. This is all software rollout. RippleNet is connected to these groups, let alone, I know we've done consulting for the top 40 40, 50 governments so it should be no surprise to you guys but i want to show you the potential is there and we are simply waiting now all right so let's get into this video <clears throat> right here meltem demirrors or demirrors anyways this is about facebook and libra just to clear some things up this is actually on page 13 of this so check this out Facebook. So it turns out Libra is not a blockchain. It's a database. And it turns out we are not going to do the whole permissionless thing, such as an open source technology with, you know, Bitcoin or, you know, XRP in their ledger. So it's going to be a permission database of just credits and debits to the Libra fund. Guys, these are just IOUs. Nothing is different. It's just a for profit, you know, type of mission that's occurring. So I'm going to read this verbatim. Listen to this. Page 13, I urge policymakers and regulators alike to treat Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as open, permissionless technologies that will support American growth and treat Libra in the context of the facts. Is a private, for-profit effort led by a corporation in collaboration with a group of private operators and investors, you know, just aiming to make money, guys, and custodying potentially billions of dollars of the public's money. Absolutely, that would totally occur. They could easily get adoption by essentially with Facebook marketplaces, you know, just giving you, you know, twenty free dollars of Libra in exchange for, you know, buying something. Free money, people are going to do it, even if they worry about privacy and centralization. Libra may be the first of the privately controlled business models, but I expect there will be many other corporations who attempt to seize on the popularity and the benefits of Bitcoin to market, promote, and expand their offerings. I ask you to remember that these things are not Bitcoin. And are not cryptocurrencies. To treat them as such would be a mistake. I urge the members of the committee to maintain this clear line now and in the future. And again, 
She goes on to say, no shade to Facebook or Libra, again, Calibra, but please just call your project what it is. It's a payment network for digital IOUs redeemable at the bank of Facebook, letting this entity just become more powerful. And instead of, you know, all this talk about one world currencies, which I don't ever see occurring, we see the talk of a one world corporation. Ridiculous. I don't, you know, personally want to give Facebook this much power. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's a database. All right. Still interesting. Of course, we'll see what kind of route they go. We'll see if Libra succeeds at all or has some form of market share, but they have to call it what it is and be transparent. Remember, in my previous video, talking about the DCEP, you remember Chinese digital currency, electronic payment protocol that is coming. It is utilizing cryptography. It is pegged to the renminbi at a ratio of one to one. They literally said, Facebook or anything like this will not be, you know, reaching, you know, global reserve status or even just be a threat to the U.S. dollar and be a global currency because it's, you know, it poses a sovereign risk. This is what is occurring again. Ripple, the company, they're working with XRP ecosystem. R3 is working with them, SBI. They understand this. They're working with regulators. They're not trying to replace the system. They're simply allowing a multi-currency bridge asset so everything can continue to become and operate more efficiently. That is all. This is the protocol that I am investing in. Not financial advice. Do your own research. But this is what I wanted to clear up. I, you know, I'm so tired of addressing Libra as a threat. I'm so tired of addressing the FUD about um, you know, XRP centralization and being owned by Ripple. I'm tired of addressing the FUD of being a classified as a security. I've shared my points of view on this and time will tell all. All right. Next, wanted to share this quote from David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple. So again, XRP underscore crow website is status.hr. Hands down, great website, similar to XRPRK.com. Check these out for great information, all sources, and great infographics for any newcomers to learn. So right here, David Schwartz. The end game is just money moving invisibly as easily as information. Keep in mind, guys, XRP is that bridge asset. It can fuel the transactions on the ledger. You can issue IOUs. It is very, very versatile. All right, remember, it's just going to be the settlement layer for central banks between operating money. None of us need to know how it works. Just like many of us just use the internet, we use our cell phones, we use our credit cards, and we don't really comprehend how it works or what's happening on the back end. This is just going to happen just as anything. All right. Next, XRP Crypto Wolf. So one of the most famous venture capital firms in Silicon Valley, of course, many have heard of this group, Idrissen Horowitz, is raising as much as $450 million now for its second cryptocurrency fund. They could finalize the new crypto fund in a week, but they have not, re they have not placed a hard cap on its size yet. So why is this relevant? Well, Idrissen Horowitz was actually one of the original investors for the company of Ripple and banking cryptocurrency as a whole. For example, right here, um, well, actually, this is just the article. I was just reading over that. So right here, Ripple Insights, older article, of course. This is in 2016. Ripple raises $55 million in Series B funding. What do we see? Of course, we see many of the groups that went live recently. SCB, Sign Commercial Bank. We see Standard Chartered, Accenture, no surprise, helping with digital transformation. Um, you know, Google Ventures and so on. And as you can see right here, existing Ripple investors, some of the originals include Google Ventures, Idrissen Horowitz, IDG Capital Partners, and Jerry Yang's AME Cloud Ventures. They've received a total of $93 million in funding, and this was back in 2016 when they're really getting off of the ground. All right. Again, leveraging Ripple's deep expertise, compliance, we understand, you know, co-developing the ecosystem, not trying to change it, always evolving, benefits, you know, etc. All right. Now, as we go on, Right here, we see Katie Hahn, who has quietly been rising in the Bay again. She is actually leading Adreesen Horowitz Crypto Fund, but with her general partner and renowned crypto enthusiast, Chris Doxon. So I wanted to share a little bit about him. General partner at Horowitz and co-leads its $350 million crypto fund. Co-founder and CEO of two startups previously. Again, and so we can just go right here. This was actually June 2018. As we go further down. I want to go Ripple, and the, the gentleman is here again. And again, this is Chris Dixon. So he goes on to say, we've made about 20 crypto investments over the last five years. Ripple was my first investment in January 2013, and then Coinbase later in 2013. 
These are the people that have their eyes on the prize. If you do not think that XRP will be a clear winner in this space and has great probability along with some of the other top long-lasting projects that have integrations, proof of concepts, and they have people building on them, I don't know what to tell you. Remember that video I just recently shared with Spring? They had three developers already you know, practicing sending packets and scalability, and they already were able to beat Visa's 100 and what, 50 million, um, I believe it was packets or some type of scalability. And we already got to 170 million. And they said, that's really funny that it took three developers to just whip that out. And we haven't even gotten started yet. This is the internet of value, guys. Value will move like information. All of these pushes are a good thing for the economy in a way. My heart goes to out. My heart goes out to everyone affected. But you have to see what is occurring. There is greater things going on than what we think. All right, let's keep going. Cool point I wanted to share. This is by Brady Neils. Again, audit me, please, on Twitter. Former BTC Maxi. Big fan, again, of just all you know cryptocurrencies and sees a future in the digital asset space and tokenization of assets. So we have a few categories here. We have fiat, you know, currencies that we see today, US dollar, euro, yen. We have stable coins, maybe, you know, Tether or USD coin with uh, Coinbase. All right. And then we have digital assets. And of course, these can be other assets, you know, Ethereum. Bitcoin, XRP, you can see anything like that. Now, we have fiat, could be a unit of, you know, we see these groups, unit of accounts, we have medium of exchanges, and store of values. Working together creates the best money. So as we go here, US dollar, Bitcoin, XRP, and then talking about a point that uh, Brad Kimes, we have fo the folks over at, you know, Lee from SPQR, and then also Mr. Fresh, these guys are must follows here, and they're discussing this, and I actually wanted to share this. So right here, or the CBDC route, so get ready for some abbreviations. So, or the central bank digital currency route, use the best of fiat, stable coins, and digital assets. So US dollar would be a unit of account it has become, again, creating a stable coin, call it USDX or Jap you know, JPY, Japanese Yen X, that is collateralized, for example, maybe on the XRP ledger, by a digital asset, serving as a store of value. So again, these are stable coins, US dollar, Japanese, you know, yen, and they have an X at the end of them to show that they're actually on the ledger for XRP is this example and XRP is this digital asset and the digital asset is serving as a store of value. So it'll simply be that store of value where the utility is bridging over the assets. So when you're collateralizing tokens, they actually need to hold XRP and escrow, reducing the supply, increasing the demand, therefore increasing the guess the price. All right. So again, MOE, this is the medium of exchange, will be the stable coin pegged one to one to the US dollar or the Japanese yen. Very interesting thoughts. Again, this goes hand in hand with kind of David Schwartz in his talks from last fall, talking about additional benefits of the XRP ledger. I encourage you guys to look into that. Continue your own research. You can always continue to learn at XRPL.org, but also keep an eye on what David Schwartz is doing. Um, definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel. We need to get him up there. He has, you know, information that talks about, you know, way, well above people's heads, but I think it's really, really interesting because you can see what they're kind of working on and how fast they really implement it. And I think he, that he's has a lot of things going and cooking for a long time. All right, next, King Solomon sharing this. This is related to R3. Again, Quota Settler can settle via XRP, but let's just see what they're working on in terms of DLT adoption. I'm not going to relate to XRP. I just want to show you what is going on at the institutional level. April 16th, 2020. So we have Project Spunta. Again, this is banking Re reconciliation. We have the case study here as well. Fast and transparent interbank reconciliation powered by distributed ledger technology. Now, before we get into this, of course, they're launching production phase. I believe it's phase two, and they already launched a few. 23 banks are set to go live in May 2020. Uh, I'll just go through these pictures, and then I actually want to show you guys and just kind of better explain reconciliation versus settlements. So fast and transparent interbank reconciliation. Before settlements can occur, which is the physical transaction of money, we need to reconcile, make sure the messaging is good to go, make sure kind of the clearing is done and the obligations and the information and data is sent to and from before they can finally do the physical action of settling the currency, which of course XRP poses as a great use case for the bridge asset space. So Spoon to DLT, we've done connections with Sia Chain. We've shown that, you know, Ripple covers all of the layers for the integration layer or the application layer, excuse me, using Corda Enterprise. All right, so we can see this. So Sia, keep an eye on them. 
Right here, all these plans are put into effect, production phase in March 20, first group of 17, and now we have additional groups joining, and this is all on Corda. 23 banks, part of the second wave, are already at work to go into production in May 2020. This third wave is scheduled in October 2020. All right, and we can see also, look, Nostro and Vostro account processes. These are real things, guys. These pre-funded accounts, and with XRP settlements and real-time gross settlement, you can reduce this capital and allow these to go create additional streams of income. So right here, clearing, or perhaps reconciliation, is the process of sending out, reconciling, and in some cases, confirming payment orders, you know, security transfer, prior to settlement details, even, you know, part of the messaging. And then settlement is the actual action of transferring, the physical action of transferring securities or final funds between two parties. So in simple words, clearing is the process of determining the obligations who owe who's what, you know, who owes what to whom, excuse me, and then settlement is just the process of actually fulfilling those obligations. So again, XRP is the settlement aspect, aspect excuse me, I'm talking so fast here, I'm just trying to get through this. Um, but again, just showing you, Project Spunta, reconciliation, may have nothing to do with XRP at all, or Ripple integration whatsoever. This is R3, they already have their blockchain service, they have Corda, all right, live with some of the biggest groups in the world. But now, what we still need is settlement, and we know that Corda R3 has announced that Corda can settle with XRP. It was, they said it can settle with other digital assets, yet the only digital asset they mentioned was XRP. So I found that to be interesting, and again, Bank reconciliation is the definition, or the definition is the settlement of records between the balance per company financials and the balance per the bank statement. All right, so the process of accounting, bank statement reconciliation is essential because of the many timing differences and errors in the recording process between two parties. Just wanted to share that. So hopefully you found this video interesting, guys. The biggest things I wanted to hammer down was Libra. Again, just a permission database, credits and debits, IOUs, nothing's changed. Can it still be a threat? Yes, but I don't think that regulators will allow a sovereign threat to take over. Will it, you know, exist in the future? Perhaps. I, I don't care. It's not a threat to XRP for settlement. There still needs to be a bridge asset. I'm not threatened by it whatsoever. Um, I think that there's going to be more than one winner in the space. Again, then talking about the background of, you know, Interledger Protocol, XRP, and the XRP Ledger. Talking about the funding in Andreessen Horowitz. We got Chris Dixon here. We got Katie Hahn on these massive, massive groups and backing that were original Series A, B, and C investors for Ripple. We're talking about collateralizing tokens, and Brady Niels brings home this great point again that we've talked about a lot on this channel. All right, remember collateralizing tokens. Now, it doesn't even have to be fiat. This can actually be any version of an asset or equity or even precious metals or oil in the energy sector. It can be anything at all, gaming assets, you name it. So you have to really think about this because we're so early. Speculating what the internet of value will be like in the next several years is similar to trying to speculate what the internet of information was. Imagine being in 95, 1995, and imagining the concept of YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, this is well past just mere email, guys. This is well past it, of course. I mean, now we have various applications, access databases. Uh, Microsoft has, you know, Excel, things of this nature. And they just keep evolving faster and faster. We have cloud with Google Drive. It's never, um, it's never ending, constantly, you know, fragmenting, classifying, and building off itself exponentially. All right, and then King Solomon, another must follow, guys. Always just providing this information. Connect the dots, guys. This is happening. This is truly occurring, and we are going digital. Now, the question is, to what degree will XRP be used and implemented? Because it is already being used today, but we are simply waiting for the floodgates to open, as State Street, one of the biggest asset fund managers in the world, say, and they custody 10% of the world's assets. They said it will be trickle, 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 and then flood. We are waiting for that flood moment. I believe it will be so fast, many people will not be prepared. The only ones that will be prepared are those that are doing their own research, taking risk with only the money they can afford to lose in this new speculative asset class that is quickly becoming based off utility. So with that, guys, I appreciate you all. As always, be sure to like this video, share it around if you found something useful, and I will see you in the next one.